Welcome, everyone. My name is Isaac Iwocho. If you're just joining us, this presentation is titled Googleification. And if you if you just join in today, I want to assure you that this is being recorded. Um, sorry for the uh, slight delay. I just wanted to make sure we're all in. I'm going to start this presentation. As I start this presentation, I want to introduce myself briefly. So my name is Isaac Iwosho. I'm an adjunct instructor here at Oakland College. I also tutor at the Writing Center. Um, I, in addition to tutoring, I'm also a proposal writer. I'm interested in, in uh, social media technology. I'm also interested in, um, in, in um, writing pedagogy. And I think it's, it's also a good idea to to emphasize that I have some experience using various productivity platforms, so it is a professional. Um, and that decides me about this presentation. Now, I'm going to go over some of the topics we're going to cover today. And I think it's fair to mention that uh, there's going to be a background discussion of this topic. And in covering the background, I am going to talk about Googleification. I'm also going to talk about various productivity platform suites and college students, of course. Then the other part of my presentation is called the reality. Think of it as the second part. In the second part, I will cover excerpts from the survey, the survey on, on, that I passed out to Oakland College students, as well as other college students on their, their preferences for productivity platform suites. And I would talk about key takeaways from the survey. Um, the pushback, of course, which is the main goal of this presentation, is to how to get students um, to think beyond Googleification. And I will talk about Microsoft 365. The reason why I'm going to talk about this is because I think it's one way to push back against Googleification. I should mention that uh, this orientation has a theme. Um, I do not want to promise more than I'm able to deliver. But I did look into the topic of intersectionality and andro andragogy or adult learning um, education. And there are a few things to say. I wouldn't pretend that this is going to focus on, on intersectionality and adult learner, learning uh, learners. But I would mention that um, there are a few aspects of this presentation when it comes to questions about access, um, not just for Gen Zs, but also international students, students from the global south. Um, so from speaking to students who are adult learners, who are international, who are from the global south, I, I've observed that they have a different preference from when it comes to productivity platform suites, very different from the ones who are born, who, who went through the K-12 education system here. On that note, I would mention that if we accept that there are a diverse group of learners who approach this use of technology different, the use of technology differently, then we cannot just prescribe one productivity platform suite for all students. Um, in other words, we must be versatile in our promotion of productivity platform suites. Um, on that note, I want to take us through an activity. Uh, you would see a QR code on your screen. If you do not mind um, using your phone, um, that's that's the that's the new. Uh, it's very late today for people to use QR code. If you're not too familiar with QR code, I have a Bitly link which you can use. Um, so I want I would like all participants. Uh, to to make take advantage of this um, QR code. I I am not collecting names. I'm not collecting emails. It's anonymous. I I do from looking at the list of participants joining. I understand we have people from administration, people who who are educators, librarians, uh, and um, professors of language, pedagogy. And so I I understand we have a, a, an array of, um, of 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 professionals here. So I just want to take this survey to just. Um, consider, I want to consider the preferences, opinion, thoughts. So it shouldn't take three minutes of your time, three to two, three and a half minutes. Um, so I will just wait for, let's say, uh, let's give it about um, three minutes and I will check back with you. Um, and if you like me, I would use, I will play some music. I promise it's not going to be boring music. It's jazz, classic, uh, sorry, modern jazz. And I will try to turn it down if you find it too loud. Mm-hmm. 
let's take about two, three minutes. Okay. I got a question about posting the link, which I'm going to do. So that's the link to use for those who are not too conversant with uh, the QR code. I apologize for not doing that earlier. I'm gonna mute the music. Uh, let's take an additional one minute or a couple of seconds. If you were not able to finish this as I'm speaking, um, you have the link to it and I can give you more time. You could do it. You could turn it in when this presentation is over or after the presentation. I, I'm not going to be reviewing it just now because um, I still have to look at it and then interpret this, the results. But it just I just want to make this available to all participants to um, let you know that I am interested in 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 look in in, in access in, in in evaluating other positions on this topic. Okay. All right. I want to move next to a topic that I would consider um, more like an introduction of this presentation. To this presentation, the word preamble is something I'm sure some of us, especially if you study the constitution, it's it's a legal word. But another way to think of this is more like as an introduction to this presentation, an introductory disclaimer, because I don't want to pretend that this presentation is going to cover everything that you are thinking about Google vacation. I'm, I'm sure that we all have assumptions when it comes to this, um, that there are administrators in attendance. I'm sensitive to this as well. Um, I am not going to get into certain discussions. Um, I'm talking about this from the perspective as an instructor. Um, and also uh, who teaches composition, specifically um, uh, first year writing. So I'm thinking of this in terms of the dominant productivity platform suites, uh, which many of us, if we, we, we know that to be Google Workspace and uh, Microsoft 365. So I do have a position um, and I'm sure that you would see that as a present uh, what I think about this topic. I want to mention that it's my belief that many college composition students are predisposed to use Google platform tools and are more likely to push back against um, using Microsoft Office. It's now called 365. So I'll use that interchangeably just so you know. Um, when you you tell them about um, the choice of, 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 of platform tools and you give them the option. So I surveyed students and in order to be sure of this, that I'm, I'm, this is not just my feeling or just, just my opinion. And I researched this and pretty much it confirms, yeah, and there's a reason why this is the case. So if you're just joining, just remember that this is, I'm just covering the background um, to this, I will get to the um, to the pushback and to the reality as I promised. But as a quick refresher, just want to walk you guys through some common productivity platform tools, which I'm sure that uh, we are familiar with. So I have selected four, I'm not going to go into all the other ones. There are many Chinese um, productivity platform suites, suites out there, um, but the famous one, of course, we know it's, uh, Microsoft 365 or Office. Um, well, 
um, I'm focusing specifically on the trifecta of productivity suite. So Word, Excel, or, or PowerPoint presentation. Another one that some of us here will be familiar with is Word Perfect Office. I'm sure those of us who are millennial, perhaps if you're not a millennial, you probably come up, you know about this. This was once dominant when I first started college. I was using this and later I switched to Microsoft and then it was Google I was using because it was the main, um, it was just common and popular to use Google. And uh, I'm sure that those of you who are Mac users, I'm currently presenting from a Mac laptop. Um, so I'm switching between the camera, which I have on one side and my, on my on Mac laptop on the other side. Uh, pages, numbers, keynotes, the trifecta productivity suite, um, that's Mac. Uh, then of course, the famous one, it's uh, Google Docs and Google Sheets and Slides. Um, if you're, uh, I, I, and that needs no specific introduction. So these are the common productivity platform suites that I think many educators administrators are probably familiar with all this. Um, and now I want to move on to, 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 the, to the next topic, which is more about um, K-12 to college. So why Google Vacation? Um, well, consider this email, which has been, uh, um, it's an anonymous email, this blurb, um, and, and see what it says. I, 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 find, I find that this, this was in 2013, but um, notice I have, have also highlighted, I've, I've added emphasis to this. Um, this is revealing something about students' uh, preferences, and especially at the K-12 level, what is likely, this proves pressure, um, um, pressure when you think about what's going on now. Um, because they are, uh, to be honest, when I think about this, uh, I also think of the adage that the key to understanding the present is, is to understand the past. The post on the left speaks volume of the influence of Google productivity suites at the K-12 level. And uh, you, when you look at this other email, which I, I, I went back to it, I got it from my email, an Oakton College email. Um, I also thought, wow, that's interesting because it seems like we're very, we're considerate of students' uh, background, where they've come from and how this can impact them when it comes to using collaboration tools. So this is not just to, I'm not critiquing what we're doing at Oakton. I'm just trying to highlight how um, we, what we're doing is, it's, is, is also, um, very sensitive and considerate of our students' um, educational technology background. Um, so that's my point of highlighting this. And if you're interested more about this, um, I have my references, my, which you can look at, um, Google Vacation, Google Vacation and Universities. Um, I think um, that's something particularly administrators will probably, I mean, we know about it, but we have certain choices when we decide to use one product suite over the other, which I'm not questioning. Okay, uh, this is just a quick refresher. If, we're curious about how this all started. Um, well, it all began in Chicago, and it, you know, Googleification began in Chicago in the K-12 setting, and it started with Chromebook. So Google came to 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 CPS and did a bunch of things, um, things that I would say, I mean, I think administrators are questioned, because they went behind administrators to promote um, a lot of his uh, platform suites, and when you had all the apps um, coming up, and especially in 2012, um, the, this, this became um, something that the, at, by 2012, Google was really challenging Microsoft and it pretty much overthrown Microsoft by 2013 on the K-12 level. Um, you, you see other um, initiatives like Google, Google Palooza. The first one was actually in Chicago. Um, and this is if you're interested in history. And then, you know, by 2015, <laughs> CPS, uh, you know, which had, had a lot of budgetary concerns, you know, they didn't hesitate to like, select Google um, Workspace for the reasons, of course, you know, it saved money. And, uh, but I'm not going into that I'm in more detail, but you, it's quite understandable. Um, now, I should highlight that the topic wasn't because it was just better. It was just that it offered more opportunities for the administrators, especially in K-12 um, CPS, um, to, to, to um, for instance, cloud storage. And, and then they had budgetary concerns um, around that time. And, and the rest, as I say, it's history. Um, and now if you're interested more in this topic, I don't want to go over all the history of this because it's not the focus of this presentation. Um, but um, there is a reason why Google is dominant and, and and has so much sway over students than even Microsoft Office 365. Um, there's this exciting article, which I recommend. It's called How Google Took Over the Classroom. Um, it's by Natasha Singer, 27, 2017 article. Uh, it just walks you through and everything be began in Chicago and, 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 and 
some Google did some unorthodox things. When I say unorthodox, I mean like I mean they they were very aggressive, you know, in marketing this and pilot testing their product, their apps to many K twelve teachers. And then we had teachers who were using it. So I was I started using it um, Google Suite in twenty eleven uh, when I was an intern at at the Chicago um, with the um, at city in City Hall many years ago. And and I and I, I thought it was very cool and intuitive. Um, okay, so why Googleification? I'm sure that if you are an educator, administrator, or teacher, you're wondering, so why this topic? Why present on this? What does this have to do with composition? Because that's what I teach. I'm not a tech genius or a tech administrator, um, but I, 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 this topic got my attention for some reasons that you will see. So the first one is how to do with students' use of technology. And the question I will ask is this, um, how many of you who are teachers out there have sat down with a plan to comment on all your students' essays submitted on D2, only to discover that some have turned in an essay in a document format, which you cannot open, howsoever you try. This happened to me countless of times. And then the frustration that you've already planned you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, um, at, you're gonna grade all essays at, at maybe like, let's say seven from seven to maybe 10 p.m. Because um, I, I tend to grade late and I do it until I get tired. And then you have like four students who turn in some essays that you can't even open the document. And it's like, okay, because of that, that you, you've got to like reach out to them. And then by the time they respond, it just consumes your time. I don't need to explain myself. If you're a teacher, professor, instructor who dealt with different documents, you understand. Um, another question I have again is how many of you who have, have, have been sent an email with an invitation to edit a document? When there's what you call assignment submission folder, which students, the students who sent you this invitation to edit did not perhaps look into, um, they did not use, um, and where they should have turned in their assignments in the first place. Um, it's if a student sends you an email that says invitation to edit, it means they're coming from somewhere. And we know to go back to what we've what I've been discussing. It's it's all it's all I'm seeing some comments. Let me take my time and see. Okay, so I I agree with my Michael Nichols and Google Doc never works. Yeah, so we'll go over this. Hopefully we have some time in the discussion to cover this. So I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone. So this frustration, as you can see from the pictures I put here, and then the student will send you an email back saying that an angry email, so, professor, why didn't you grade my assignment? You know, I submitted my work, you haven't graded by so, so, and so time. So they make it look like you, it's you being careless with your, um, with your, with your timing or perhaps you, you just neglected their work, not knowing that you also had tech issues. By tech issues, I mean, you couldn't open their documents or they, um, did not follow your formatting requirements. And so to turn in an assignment in a format in which you cannot open. So we see how this can be recursive. You frustrated, the student is frustrated. Um, you think the student is at fault, the student thinks that you are at fault. And so there's confusion. And so um, how do we navigate this? Um, and so this is why it's important. And I, I'm gonna mention something that I'm not, I don't wanna put all the blame on Googleification because it's not just Googleification, it's just the apps and the variety of software. Um, you, you see being used in, um, in class, the student brought to the classroom. Um, um, on that note, I want to move over to uh, the next topic of discussion, and it, it's, it's Googleification. I need to define our, define our terms. So when it comes to Googleification, what does it mean? Well, I'm using this term in the context of uh, education, broadly speaking. It could mean Googleification could mean everything related to Google. And that's not the focus of this presentation. I'm not talking about Google's culture or semantical concerns when it comes to using Google search or what Google is doing with data. Uh, and that's an interesting topic. But I'm more focused when it comes to the, the use of Google's productivity platform suites in college. Um, so we have um, in K-12 level, um, we have students who, who use K, um, Chromebooks. By the way, I should mention briefly, that you guys know that um, Chromebook has a lot of limitations. Um, if a student brings a Chromebook into a classroom, they cannot download Microsoft 365 on it. However, they can join online um, and do some work on Microsoft online, only online, but they cannot download it. So they may be trying to download it and be growing to issues, not knowing that it's just not compatible. Um, so there's certain issues as well. Um, so when it comes to, let us let me go back to this because I want to highlight a few things. So we, we, we know about these apps. Um, just to highlight the presence in our classrooms. Um, why students use devices such as Chromebooks? Well, it's low cost. And also these are dominant tools. They're mostly familiar with it. So if they bring this to the classroom, it's not their fault. It's just, that's just how they were, um, they were, they were raised. Um, and thanks to the revolution, the disruption in education that happened in the 20, 2011, 2012, 2013. Um, okay. 
Now, when it, when it comes to Googleification, I should mention there is a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, on the one hand, you have benefits, um, which I have to highlight. And on the other hand, I would say, I wouldn't say that it's a bad thing, but I, I think there are challenges. Uh, and I've already mentioned briefly, but I would I would mention again that um, when it comes to, I see a question coming. Okay, huge issues, okay. Oh yeah, that's true, John Wade. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's something I I learned I learned I learned because I was I was very curious when I had students bring in all sort of devices to my classroom, and then it was having I was having issues when it comes to grading and was slowing me down. I couldn't open their their documents, and you know, so I I began to see that yeah, Chromebooks are given from high school, and so yeah, so that's perfect. So they think that that's compact that's good enough for them to use in college, and maybe it, it's good enough for some classes. But then when you start going when when you when you're in classes that professors requires you to use other products your platform suites, they run into um, problems because they think that that Chromebook can 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 handle um, you know other can handle app software application not knowing that you know, Google Chromebook is pretty limited to like Google it's it's not very friendly to um, Microsoft and, and other apps um, okay aside outside Google uh, another issue I want to highlight when it comes to challenges is the issue of global South like China you can China has banned uh, Google. I think there's severe restrictions on Google. Not that it's totally banned, if I'm not mistaken, but I know that there's severe restrictions that like you can't use Google Workspace in China. And China is a police state, and so um, they 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 pretty much control that. So, what 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 happens when we start thinking about other issues pertaining to um, um, the challenges regarding this? Um, we can say that there 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 that that um, there there may be other other ways to conceive of exposing our students to other productivity platform. Um, but I don't want I don't want to use this sort of way to say that we shouldn't use Google uh, um, productivity platform suites. Um, I recognize that. So I want to come to the reality, the fun part. Uh, when I decided to uh, to survey students, I surveyed um, first I started with my my own students in the classroom. So in my class, I always try to persuade students to use Microsoft 365 and I will tell you I'll walk you through how I do it. Um, I've come to greater understanding when I do this because I, you could do it the wrong way and then you and you you you're gonna be um, frustrated and they don't do what you want them to do. Um, so and then I moved on to like survey previous students I've had. I still keep in touch with and help them in some way or the other, maybe with their re resumes or perhaps if they need a reference. And I reached out to my and they were many some many of them were pleased to 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 respond to the survey. I also reached out to um, another faculty, um, um, Stephen. McNamara, um, a very helpful faculty, and he let me survey students. And I, I got um, a variety of responses from students when it comes to um, this topic of notification. Uh, um, so what happened in the in the survey? Um, this is the first one I want to highlight. When you look at um, um, the this, you, again, you see the question when it comes to drafting an assignment. Um, what is the response you see from students? Well, they prefer Google Docs. Uh, and, and so, so when you when you look at this, uh, you see this when it comes to editing and polishing college assignments. Again, it's Google Docs for the win again. Okay, uh, let's go further. And when it comes to presentation tools such as uh, Microsoft PowerPoint or slides, slide for the win again. Um, some of this shouldn't be surprising to us. When it comes to uh, okay, um, so you've covered that. So and these are like certain statements that they made. And um, in reading through the statements, I was able to highlight some key points that I see in in students in students um, preferences. Um, one of the points that I noticed uh, or the themes that I noticed is that um, when it comes to the the use and convenience of of, of Google productivity tools, you're likely going to see students are going to say yeah. Um, it's Google Workspace, and I think this is the best argument you can um, students give. Um, they don't really talk about, um, well, yeah, it's intuitive. Um, like we don't know, uh, it's convenient. Um, these are kind of popular arguments, and uh, um, students have some frustrations with using something that is going to take their time and and with which they're not familiar with. Familiar with, um, so we can't really blame for them. Or I would say, um, why not? Why would you use something that is going to take your time? That it's not you're not really used to using. Um, so uh, 
these are some of the reasons that uh, pro Google Workspace students gave. Now, when I surveyed and, and I also captured the, the students who were pro Microsoft Office, and uh, the this I would say some of, quite a number of these students are my, my my former students because I try to promote it and tell them about the cool features of Microsoft Word. Um, but I I don't want to say it's this is just due to my influence. These are students who uh, uh, went to very good um, like Wilmet Public Schools and they and, you know they are very experienced uh, and they. They've had other experience with uh, Microsoft Office, and they know they have some some understanding of what the product, the capabilities of the advanced tools and features of it. So they have, um, so they give this position, and um, and to my to my surprise, um, I was quite impressed that these tools are very knowledgeable about pro both productivity suites. Now there are still students who are not well informed, or perhaps um, do not express a preference, and we cannot blame them. And I would mention this because one time, uh, some semesters ago, I had a student in class, and I introduced and I had them use uh, PowerPoint to to present. And she had, she was using all these animations like I was like I'm using on this slide. And she and I asked her, "How was your experience?" She told me she's never used it before, and she said it because in K two she was never they never had to use it. It was all Google Slide. I'm like I'm not surprised. And then I said, "How did you like it?" She says she really loves it, and. And because of her, I'm using, I started using animations. And I've, I've been using Microsoft PowerPoint for a long time, but I just didn't check the other features of it. When I was playing around with it, I found out more features. Uh, and you know, there is, there, is, there is this perception that if you are, if you are um, a Google, Google Slide user, um, you perhaps have, um, you, you have your reasons for it, and I'm not going to dismiss it. I've used it to present, but I, I like to do things the hard way, um, especially I like to use tap into features and advanced tools when I'm presenting, or also even when I'm even writing. And I'll, we'll talk about that later when it comes to Word. Um, but as I move ahead, I want to talk about the summary of the survey. And, and on that note, I mentioned that many students, uh, so not to my, to my, it's not really surprising to me, uh, are familiar with, uh, more, more familiar with Google Workspace than Office 365. Um, even my students, for many of the ones I surveyed, even though I try to persuade a lot of them, I, I, I think I would say like 50% of, of them perhaps express a preference for Google Docs, um, which to me, it's not surprising again, given what we've highlighted. Um, and I also mentioned that when I speak to my adult students, as I mentioned, um, international students, um, they all tell me that uh, they prefer Microsoft Office. And, it's, these are students from the global south or Eastern Europe. Um, they've used it before. Um, okay, um, I should go back to say that, and I acknowledge that even though as I, I, I mentioned, we talk about Microsoft 365, students have particularly acknowledge issues of compatibility uh, with, with when they use their Mac computers. I'm using a Mac right now, and the way it displays, the interface is quite different from when I use my, um, my Windows PC. I, I love Microsoft PowerPoint and Word on my PC, on my um, Windows PC, better than it, it appears on Mac. For some reason, I don't, I just don't, I'm using a Mac right now, but I just, I just, I, I just like it more better. It's just the appearance. It's just the design. I could tap into something, but, but students have reported compatibility issues when they're using their Mac. So I try to give those students benefit of the doubt because I don't want to be seen as, um, as not understanding and I've investigated this and, and I can't, I can't. I don't. I can't say I know the answer to all of this. Maybe they downloaded the wrong um, one for a PC. I, I. I don't know. But I try to give them the alternative. That, okay, you can just send me your online. Um, your I converted from a PDF to a Word document just to um, grade their assignment. Or if we are working in a computer lab, I say use a computer lab to do this. So because and I have my reasons for also for using Word rather than Google Doc. Uh, okay. So I should mention that uh, I came up with this, this survey and I was able to analyze the results further. And I will, I will share you the link so you can also look at it for yourself um, if you're interested in knowing what I found out. Uh, uh, but, I, but this, I would mention that when I have preference, preference on top, um, that's for a reason um, because um, um, students I've noticed who have strong awareness, experience and knowledge when it comes to um, this productivity platform suite, especially are able to um, segue between uh, between navigate both both um, um, both productivity platform tools uh, have 
they, they give it, I would say, a strong rationale for their preferences. And like I said, the issues of, of convenience and ease, it's something you can take away. So the students just love that idea of ease. Um, so yeah, I have to say that um, they are more, more, many of our students, especially the first year students, are encountering more Google Workspace in their profession, in their daily lives. Um, now, I think another way that I've, 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 I've tried to convince them, which I will discuss more in depth, is that when you step into the professional setting, I work as a proposal writer during the day. We both we use Google productivity platform suites, and we also use Microsoft Office 365. I'm able to navigate both platform tools easily. Um, it's it, the world doesn't start and end with Google Workspace, so that's one way I try to tell them and show them also how I use it. And we'll go over that later. So if you're interested in the in the full result, uh, I would encourage you to you can scan that QR code or the link here. Um, if you have the chance, you can write it down on a paper. I can also send you my presentation after this. This um, this is over. Um, so you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm sure I'm willing to share this with you. I would like to serve more students, but I didn't have enough time. And uh, and okay, all right. So let's move on from the next one to the next. Okay, so um, if the, this is a great debate. Um, which is better? And uh, I'm sure we all have our preferences that we've mentioned. Um, and uh, research has been done about this. And I say, what does better mean to you? Is better does better mean um, convenient? Does better mean easy? Um, it be it being intuitive to you, intuitive to use, or do we talk about better in terms of um, advanced tools and features? Because if we're talking about advanced tools and features. And if you've used either of these productivity suites, I have a strong doubt that you would say it's is the former, because um, I use this all the time. I, it's just just so, so much you can do with uh, Microsoft 365. Now I, I realize that not everybody wants to do some advanced work with Word or PowerPoint. It, maybe they just need to write just a, you know a productive survey to just get the job done. Um, to compare this with a car, um, if, if let's say you drive a Hyundai Elantra. Uh, 2015, and then there's a um, and there's a Mercedes 2021. Both cars will take you to where you're going. Both cars will take you to Open College. But in terms of performance, uh, there's a difference. Um, okay, um, so uh, I I'm going to discuss on this when it comes to the pushback now. How I push back against this dominant productivity suite, which is called Google Workspace in my class. I do not say they shouldn't use it. I never I tell them to say, but it's just when they turn in work, I try to tell them what I want to them to submit. Um, okay, so Google, I'm sorry, Microsoft 365, which is now called formerly Microsoft Office, has has several advanced tools, um, and um, you will see that um, um, Google's workspace weakness is actually Microsoft 365's strength. It has, and it continues to improve its tools. Um, you can now share docs with um, with um, Microsoft 365. Yeah, you can do it. Is it as intuitive as uh, Google Workspace? Uh, my answer has to I have to be honest. I don't think so, but I think it's getting there. Um, with a few, if you play around with it, watch a few tutorials, um, you will you will get the hang of it. I don't think it's that complicated, and you know, so that's something we have to keep out there. Um, so Microsoft has actually studied how. Uh, how Google um, Google strength in order to replicate that for for, for its users. And so so all those share collaboration tools they look so similar that Microsoft 365 they look so similar to Google's um, sharing collaboration tool. I was like, huh, that reminds me of Google sharing. So I was quite impressed. But yes, you can do a lot of this now with um, 365. Um, we don't need to go over this entire timeline, but I think if you're interested. Um, you, you will see that there's been um, over the years, starting from 2013, when 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 uh, um, Google Workspace overtook Microsoft 365 at a K-12 level, then they realized they had to go go into clouds like online storage. Be be before you 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 had to download the software. There was Microsoft uh, um, um, 2010, and then you know we had all this Microsoft 20 2012. And, and so on. They don't do that anymore. It's just now it's like, I remember when I was in college, you had to like have the software um, and download it and it costs about $100 or something like that. Now it's free. Um, it's, it's free for if you have an EDU account. So there's been a lots of changes that Microsoft has to make um, if you are using 
um, the feature called um, if you're using Word, um, there is this watch editor, editor tool. Um, it's pretty powerful, and I I use it when I write. Um, it's pretty, and I I try to recommend that to my students. Um, in Word also has I'm sorry, Power Presentation PowerPoint also has this feature called um, Designer. It helps you with picking the themes of your of your presentation. I use it for this presentation as well. It just picks up. I mean, I think it does a good job. AI does a great, brilliant job, and there are also many other cool features that that the advanced. Um, uh, Microsoft Office Productivity Suite has that, which you can take advantage of as a, a writer or as a presenter. And I try to tell some of this to my students. Um, so over the years, we've seen Microsoft 365 has, has improved greatly. And some of this I share with my students um, just so they know if they think they have complaints about it. Um, but not just that alone. So what happens when I introduce my students? Um, I have already hinted about few things that happen, um, but I should mention that I, I usually see these kinds of reactions. And the first stage is that students are just quiet. They're like, what is it? And I, and I, and I read their body language well. Um, they don't see anything, or maybe they just think that I could just get by with this. And then you have other students who, uh, they want to debate this. Um, like, they've been using this all their life. Like this, I mean, Google Workspace. And this instructor is telling me that I should not use um, um, I should turn in my assignment in a different format, um, different from what they're exposed to. Um, so I, see, I typically see these reactions in students because um, I and I have my reasons for not asking them to submit work as PDF or email it to me. I understand with PDF you get this; it's compatible. You can just open it on any app or on your phone, or any device. But the particular um, tools and features and word that I target when I edit students' paper that I cannot do. I, PDF doesn't like, give me the advantage, the opportunity to do that, or I can't do some of these things that I do um, in a Word document and, and Google Doc. Uh, so then I also have students who just, just don't listen to me. I mean, I, I have to say this, this, this is, it's a minority of students, not all students. Most students just comply. But it's the students who don't do what I ask them to do have taught me a lot about this and inspired this presentation. But I would say again, I repeat again, most students comply. Um, they just keep turning in documents as a PDF or as an Apple page. For the life of me, I've never been able to open up an Apple page when students send that to me. Um, and, and they just use some other productivity software, maybe something from China, or just, and you know, it just messes up with the formatting um, space and they just don't do what I ask them to do. So when I'm trying to grade their work, I see I'm looking at formatting um, issues and I'm like, why is this turned in, in this way? And they, they are quiet. But I realized when I investigate it's because they didn't just do what I asked them to do. They just don't want to do it. Or maybe they're just using Chromebook and for a variety of reasons that I cannot um, fully explain or capture. So I want to talk about how I expose my students or how to use in other, like specifically how I help them to just um, become settled in using it. Um, and I, and I, I thought when I started doing this, um, a couple of years ago, it was to just talk to them, just say you have it in your syllabus, or as the argument goes, and students don't like this when you say it's in the syllabus, if you figure it out, it's in the syllabus. But um, that to me, it's I've learned over the years that it's just a super easy way, easy thing to do. You can tell them it's in the syllabus, but guess what? What if they run into formatting issues? You may need further guidance. What if they're using a MacBook? Um, and so on and so forth. Another thing that I do is to recommend online tutorial videos to them. I, I like this tutorial video. Um, there's this, his name is Kevin Stradbet. He is um, an ex Google, I'm sorry, an ex Microsoft program manager. He's very knowledgeable about this. He's a, he's an, he shares insight his perspective about using these various productivity platform tools, especially related to um, Microsoft 365. And I have recommended some of his tutorials to my students because um, students not, don't, don't just need to read instructions instead of us to download it. They also need to see how it's done. So that's why I also prioritize um, exposing them to tutorial videos. And because I've thought of recording tutorial videos myself, and I do a lot of that when I teach, but then if you have good tutorial videos out there, why create another one? Um, and so I, I've thought about this, that in, in creating tutorials, like I try to, okay, that's a good idea. So from Greg, uh, so we, I think we are the same page. I do the same. Um, so I've realized, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I've just seen that. Uh, another way I do it. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. It's 
move over this. We don't want to talk about okay this now. Okay. Um, another strategy that I, I that I now do is to okay, I, I expose them to not only do I tell them about how it's being used, um, and um, like how, how that I want them to download it or that their tutorial videos out there. I now thought about another strategy. So, okay, how do I as an instructor, how do I as a professional use Microsoft 365? How do I use it? And so I just recorded a tutorial and I, I just recently, and I was like, okay, this is what I do when I go into the home tab, insert tab. And this is what I do when I comment, just to let them know. And in class, I tell my students how I use uh, the uh, margin comment. And this is what I do, and this is what they should see on their paper. This is what I do when I play around with formatting um, issues on their paper. So now they have a better perspective of why this instructor is so persistent on using um, Word because I, I have a lot of freedom to edit their paper, but also to comment on their paper and to give them um, a feedback that I think um, hopefully they would use uh, and hopefully that they'll read. Um, so this is quite similar to my previous point, but I, I also think we can talk about it from the perspective of professional. As a proposal writer, I know this is something that we use a lot, and um, there's just so much you can use with uh, Microsoft Word, especially when it comes to creating so much like tables of contact, um, content, um, references, um, you know, headings and particular designs, templates for cover letters, a bunch of a bunch of other things. So I also tell them my experience about that. And, uh, this is you you want to use Google Workspace, good for you. But when you step into the professional field. It's not the most dominant. I mean, people use a variety of productivity suites that you need to know about. And I, and I share my experience of how I use it and, and, and benefits that possibly they will, they will get from using it. Uh, okay, I'm seeing some questions. Uh, let me take a look at some of the questions. Okay, I'm seeing some links over here. Oh, that's good. I hope this will be recorded, but uh, let's move ahead, okay. Um, like technical support. Now, in in asking students to download the software that are not with which they are not familiar, um, you should also expect they may run into technical support, genuine, authentic, technical concerns. Um, and I've I've learned a lot from my students who are very hardworking, and also I know they're not bluffing when they tell me because these are students who do the reading and you know. But so I I listen to them, uh, and sometimes I'm able to problematize. Um, like I found out about students using the Chromebook who couldn't download things. I, one time I found out a student was turning in work from an iPhone. Um, I don't know what whatever she was using to turn in work, but I just couldn't. She was submitting an assignment from an iPhone that's like 1,000 plus or so. And I couldn't open the document. And I asked her, I said, what are you using to submit your work? Are you using a computer? Are you using, I just, and she told me that she was using an iPhone. And I was like, huh, I'm not surprised. And I told her, say, hey, you need, you need a personal device like a laptop, um, which is not even up to 1,000. And then she did, and she said she's got a laptop and she was turning in work. So there could be some interesting issues associated with students turning in work in a format um, with which you do not like. Um, and I try to find out, I'm, I'm playing tech, but because I'm just curious, and sometimes I'm not always successful because they don't always tell the truth. They'll tell you they're doing everything, but then when you find out, so you're doing something else. Okay, so that's one way I do it with the technical concerns. Uh, this uh, I could share, we don't need to go over everything about uh, which is better, which arguments, but I, I try to, I, I discovered there's been research on this by tech enthusiasts and people make different arguments when it comes to which is better. And I think one argument or three arguments you're likely gonna see when it comes to Google Doc is that it's just way super convenient. And I think that's, everybody agrees with that. That is reliable. Well, I would question like, what do you mean? Like when you have internet access, what about people in the global south um, who don't have internet all the time like we do in the west simplicity yeah good i i accept that but what is what about advanced tools like is simplicity better than advanced tools and features well if that works for you it helps you do get get the job done i have no issue with that so um i think there's an issue of preference here I, also, I present students with research that I've done. If I'm always curious to hear what they have to say about using using um, different productivity suites. Um, one time as a tutor, I I saw I witnessed something that I never I when when I I've used, I was using Google Doc to comment on the student's paper. I gave detailed comments on the student's paper, and this was a unique student because the student did not agree with my comments. And after we finished the conversation. He was just rejecting all the comments and I was getting notifications in my email that student has rejected this, rejected that. And I was like, oh, wow. So that was just a waste of time. 
well, it's just an excuse. It's not all students, but it was just one student who just didn't seem to agree. Um, and it was just, and I was getting those notifications and it was using Google, well, you know, so when I use, when I use Word, I always save my comments because I want a copy of what I've said on the student's paper. But when I do it on the student's paper and the student, not only did he reject all my comments, but he also changed my access, you know, so I couldn't access his document. It was some interesting student. Uh, so uh, that's one issue I ran into when using Dr. Comment on student's paper. Okay. So the arguments are pretty similar um, when it comes to PowerPoint. You've got lots of uh, tools, advanced tools for presenting. And uh, the slide, pretty basic, but you get the job done um, if you want to present, if you're not interested in um, animations, transitions, if you're not interested in AI design, if you're not interested in having um, um, add ins, sophisticated add ins like. I had one on this, but I couldn't use it for this presentation because of um, I had to sign in, and that was just going to take time. Then you may you may have a preference for Google Slide. Like I said, there's preferences, and there also there's bias too when it comes to using this, and I have my reasons for for, for selecting this. Uh, I do want to note here that um, even as we have administrators here um, and also various professionals. Um, I recognize that this is not just the only way to do it. Uh, there are various attitudes towards productivity platform tools and learning management system. Even when it comes to assignment submissions, um, some professors prefer PDF document submissions. I get it, I understand, and then they have their reasons. We have others who say students who email the documents, um, sorry, to email their assignment or essays to them, share Google links, and they comment on it. If, that's, if that, that may be effective for them, I get that. And, and we have students who, maybe these professors are, I, who have hand, hard, in, who hand in hard copy paper documents. I don't, I have worries about hand, getting paper submissions because what if I misplace it? Or students say they gave me something and then there's no proof, you know, so I'm worried about that. Uh, so I don't do that. Yeah, I, I think there, I know some instructors who do that. And, you know, then we have instructors like me who say they should turn in things, especially word in a word document submission. Okay, so I've reached the end of my presentation, but I want to mention this because um, I think um, it would I will be doing a disservice to this presentation if I did not highlight that uh, it's a cultural, um, um, there's a cultural issue here, especially generational issue um, with, with, with um, productivity platform suites. More Gen Zs are, are likely to have a preference for this for obvious reasons. Maybe there's some millennials who do um, and for, for obvious reasons. But I think it's not just to tell students to use one productivity platform tool. I think it's also ma making them versatile users of various productivity platform tools. So if a student has used Google all their life, I don't try to reinforce that in my class. I want to expose them to, to other productivity platforms like Microsoft. And if they think it's because I'm just biased towards it, I also tell them, yeah, I have experience using this. Um, and, but I also tell them the reason why they're using it. Um, well, I think it's more about demonstrating the functions um, the relevance and the efficiency of the productivity platform tool that you recommend in the class to them and showing them how to get the best out of it. Um, I think writers, editors can benefit a lot with uh, with Microsoft Word. I think um, presenters can benefit a lot with um, Microsoft presentation, PowerPoint. And um, that concludes my presentation. Any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? I looking at the Okay, yeah, I like John Wade's arguments, and 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 I and I and I do I do tell them that they're heavily used in the workplace. Yes, with Microsoft tools, I use it. We use it a lot. We as as a proposal writer, we don't like Google Docs because it messes up our format. Um, so we use Word, and we we just able to do more things with Word. Uh, so I I get I think that's a big argument, and I I respect that. Any opinions, suggestions, comments? Hi, Isaac. It's Greg. I don't know if you can see my hand as well. I can see your hand. Sure. Oh, oh okay. And I think um, Ela, is that who's, uh, we're getting feedback from Ela, I think. Is that correct? I see okay. three participants. Maybe we could mute that participant. Is anyone else doing that? Maybe she will mute herself, but if not, I would mute. Okay, thank you. Um, so, you know, uh, one of the things I was thinking about as we were, wow, that is super annoying. Can, can, Sorry, we, please, take care of that. can we please mute that participant? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Craig. It's torturing me. <laughs> um, 
Do you, you want me to wait? Do you want me to wait? Okay. I've, I have done that. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. And thanks for your time and your presentation too. Um, I was, as you were talking, I was thinking about turn it in on the, in the assignments tab. Mm -hmm. And so I've been having, there are some file formats that the students upload that turn it in can't deal with. Mm. Um, and so um, I've been having them just submit in, you know, uh, to the assignments tab, either in Word format or pages wow. or some other things that I can handle and that Turnitin can handle. Um, is Google Docs an issue with with that part of the equation? So I, I, mean, I, I think I'm not sure about that. I have to let me circle back with you on that. Maybe John Wade, who is there, could answer. But I've usually I, I actually didn't I didn't think much about Turnitin and um, and certain documents. But I know when students turn in work as Apple Pages, I have not had success trying to open such documents. And so I specifically state on my syllabus that I don't want them to turn in work as an Apple an Apple Page well, yeah, for that reason, because I'm not able to open it. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, Google Docs and turning in, I I I don't know. I I, I maybe I would do it. I, I could test it out. I'll, experiment with that, you know. Next, I think somebody, John Wade, you have your hands raised. I think Kristen might have been before me, but uh, OK. Um, I, I just wanted to make two, uh, a couple of quick points. First of all, thank you so much for doing this uh, presentation today. I think you make some really good points. And I, I just want to make it clear from the IT side, we do uh, very much want to support uh, the use of Microsoft 365 in the academic environment, right? This is not a, uh, we're not a, a Google exclusive shop here. And we understand that the very important role that Microsoft plays. Um, First of all, I want to make clear that everybody knows that students can get the online Microsoft 365 um, link in my Oakton. It's under the digital backpack under the um, academic uh, assistance uh, tab or, or menu. And so it's a single sign on directly into uh, the Microsoft 365 tools. And they also do have the rights to do the home uh, or the download version as well, as opposed to the really lame online only version. Uh, so that's out there for all students. It's also out there for all fall or will be shortly for all fall faculty. The link is there. Uh, we're licensing people today so that everybody who's teaching in fall is licensed for the downloadable versions as well if you have a personal device. And of course, the computer labs all have, you know, um, the current desktop versions of Office as well if a student doesn't have a device. Um, so I just want to make those points clear. And uh, and like I said, I think that it's there's a very strong argument for for teaching students the Microsoft tools just so they have an appropriate skill set to get into the workplace uh, sure. if that's their goal. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And sometimes uh, I teach it also Harper, and I tell them Harper is the same with Harper College. I know that. So um, with in the EDU account, students can do a lot um, to download it, so they don't have any excuse that. They don't have to pay hundred dollars or sixty dollars like we when I used to, when I was in college back in those days we had to pay uh, to get the software now it's free um, so good thank you very much John yeah they just have to log in and click the link that's all yeah 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 so I see I see a common question about pages um, I think that was answered so um, thank you Greg uh, anyone else can Did chime I... in hey <laughs> sorry it's hard to be in person and. Oh, it's Michelle, okay. was your hand up first or is it okay that I'm going? No, nope, you were time. first. You go right ahead. <laughs> all right, thanks. First of all, it's kind of great to virtually meet you. And when you went through all the things you're involved with and your qualifications at the beginning, I was like, yes, I'm really glad that we have someone with these areas of expertise. Uh, yeah, working here and presenting. So thank you so much for that. Um, I wanted to to mention that uh, I, I share all these frustrations. Um, I've actually pursued sort of a dual strategy where um, I limit the the file types that students could submit through D2L, but I also make sure that there's an option to cut and paste text directly into it and that all of because oh i teach philosophy and humanities so this is easy okay. for me is that i make sure all the students have a plain text version of the materials we're working with um i in part started to do that because i was um 
I was changing documents so that they were easier to uh, be translated into Braille, right? So the plain text was really important for that. Mm -hmm. But I also found that my students were trying to steal time to do work when they're on the bus, breaks, you know, and, and, and just, it, it would be wonderful if they could have a laptop with them, but often they just don't. But they're, if it's plain text, they can even bring up their notes app on their phone. They can save the documents on their phone in a notes app, then they can they can build momentum. So um, yeah, I, I agree with John that it's great if we can get them to a literacy with Microsoft Word, but I, I like having both options. And I think ND12 enables both options. Yeah, yeah that's good. So. I, I actually agree with that point you make about so the first week, I usually just ignore, they turn in a bunch of documents and I just say, I understand where you're coming from. I let them turn in PDF, whatever. And even if, if they want to turn in the workers uh, using the box, text box and the assignment submission box, they could do that. Because in the first week, I'm not, it's just, um, it's not a lot of points. I'm not assigning essays. I'm just assigning like things of, you know, like interest survey, it's, it's not. So I, I accept that too. So I try to do that in the first week. I, I give them a lot of free, free freedom to, Turn in whatever format. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, Christine, sorry. I think somebody else has their hands up. Yeah, this is Michelle. I actually had a question that um, I'm, I'm not sure if John could answer, but um, I, I teach accounting, and so the functionality of that downloadable Excel for our students is so so great. Um, so much more than the online version offers for 365. Is there anywhere um, available that has directions that I could post in into D2L for the students that says, go here, click on this. This is how you do it to download it. I can try to search for it myself, but I just didn't know if there's something out there already. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. Um. I don't know that we have produced documentation like that. It's a really good idea. And let me see what we can do. Um, Michelle, if I may chime in, I think to answer your question, I think once you have Microsoft Office 365, um, then you have, you should, they should have Excel. So I think the steps to download Microsoft 365 is what they need to grasp before they can access Excel. I don't know if that answers your question. But they don't have to do anything to get 365, right? They just have to click on the link. There is no extra step required for an Oakton student. They just have to log into my Oakton, click on the link, and they're automatically logged in to an active Microsoft 365 account. So, but the steps after that to actually download the software is something we could provide for students. I try to provide one in my syllabus. I just based on, but I I have to look at, make sure it's compatible. Like this, go to this, go to Microsoft directly, and type in the email. I got this from the tutorials I found online. Um, as long as an EDU account, they should have no problem. Um, that's but I I don't I don't do it directly from Oakton's website. I just tell them go to Microsoft Office. You should tell them to go directly to Oakton's website. It they save a ton of steps and everything works beautifully. If you can. Thank you, John. And maybe we'll send a communication out to all faculty just to clarify that because that's I think we we communicated a little while back, but it's. Always important to communicate multiple times. Any more questions, comments? Well, if we don't have it, I, I, I do want to share some, uh, some of my references. I, I do want to make mention of Stephen uh, McNamara, um, his composition students. Uh, also, my former students, uh, my references, and uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for joining. I do appreciate your participation in this in this uh, work, uh, workshop. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, and I was, I'm sure I'll see many of you around. I'm at the Skokie campus right now. Take care. Thanks again.